Hi, I'm Alistair Chapman and I'm going to take you through this, the much anticipated Alphatron EVF 035W external viewfinder. Now from the outside externally this really isn't anything uh, that different from any of the previous third party external viewfinders that have come before it. It is well made, it's of a metal body, uh, almost all metal, a few plastic bits here and there and this flips up and then there is a little magnet in here that holds this uh, gently in the open position. Uh, other external features worth looking at, um, well there's this one, the viewfinder has a shutter and as I turn this uh, little ring here it opens and closes the shutter and the whole idea of this is that like today when the sun is up here um, it prevents sunlight from entering directly into the viewfinder and burning or damaging the expensive and essentially non-replaceable uh, LCD screen inside the viewfinder. Now other external features on the viewfinder are the four function buttons here F1, 2, 3 and 4 and the menu button. As well as that there is a little thumb wheel here that you can use to scroll up and down through your various settings and you press it when you have the setting that you want making it very easy to adjust the viewfinder settings in the field. If I turn this around this way and remove this cover you'll see that it takes a standard Sony NPF size battery, the small size, and under here we have SDI in, SDI out, as well as HDMI in and HDMI out. In terms of mounting point, there's a quarter 20 screw here, there's one here on the top of the viewfinder, and another one underneath on the underside so plenty of options for mounting the viewfinder. The bracket I'm using here to hold this viewfinder is one that I've put together myself. It comprises of a Genus top cheese plate for the F3 with uh, a viewfinder arm that I've made here. Now one very important point about mounting viewfinders on a camera, it doesn't matter what camera or what viewfinder, is that it's really important that the viewfinder's horizon is level with the camera's horizon. If the viewfinder sags a bit like this, very often you end up tilting the camera and viewfinder to get your visual horizon level. And that can result in shots that are not level. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you mount a TV or a monitor on its side, how you could actually frame the picture um, in portrait, which of course would be wrong, we frame in landscape. But the same thing happens with a viewfinder. If the viewfinder tilts down at an angle, what tends to happen is that you will tilt the camera up to bring the viewfinder that you're looking into level and that results in the horizon in your shots not being level. So my bracket is designed so that this viewfinder can't tilt down, it won't. It has no adjustment that way. Uh, very often if you use a, a Noga arm or similar to mount one of these external viewfinders, um, they do sag and they do tilt and that's really something to watch for. Tilting viewfinders is bad news. Anyway, back to this, the EVF 035W. Little push button here allows you to release and remove the battery like so and there is a little cover that clips on here on the front and protects the battery. Um, you know, actually this cover it's nice from a cosmetic point of view, but frankly I think this is probably the weakest point on the whole viewfinder. This little cover is going to get knocked off and I'm afraid I think I'm going to lose this. Um, it's not the most secure of attachments, but it's purely cosmetic. It's not structural or anything else. If it does come off, if you do lose it, it's not the end of the world. One of the nice things about the Alphatron EVF is that because the screen, this display, is the same one as they use on the iPhone. It is designed to be used outdoors in daylight. So even on a fairly bright day like today, you can still see this screen quite clearly, perfectly clearly, without having to use the monocular viewfinder. Of course, one of the key things with any viewfinder is how good is it for focusing? 
and it's a very, very sharp uh, display. As you can see, I've actually videoed the screen here and you can see quite clearly when you go in and out of focus. It really is a very nice high resolution display. In addition to that, you have the usual focus tools. Focus assist is currently off. I can turn it on. I've assigned it to the F1 button in this case. Now I have a black and white display with colored peaking and you'll see the red colored peaking comes off as the image comes into focus. A bit windy today. Uh, or I can have color with colored peaking and again you'll see that as I go into focus um, I've chosen red. The red colored peaking comes on around fine details and fine objects. It really is very easy to focus with this uh, viewfinder. So looking at the menus on the viewfinder, if I press the menu button, we bring up the menus. This first page is primarily features related to calibrating the viewfinder, setting the correct brightness and contrast. Aperture is a sharpness control. The scan mode, whether you have under scan or over scan. The aspect ratio, 3G, so that's what, what your 3G input is. Uh, as well as the ability to, to lock the rotating knob. On the second page, this is where you can set up the colorimetry of the viewfinder. So you can set up your color response very accurately using color bars, should you choose. Uh, I, to be honest, I find it to be very good as it is out of the box. The factory settings seem to be very well set up. The next page is where you can choose all your markers and you can have your normal uh, safety area markers as well as markers for different aspect ratios such as 235 uh, things like that and you can set up the safety area and how thick the marker lines are. In addition you can set up your own uh, user markers uh, setting your own uh, areas here for any aspect ratio that you want. So uh, markers and then we have error checking this um, allows you to check for overexposure and underexposure using false color and also uh, using a, a blinking um, function where anything overexposed or underexposed actually blinks. And then we have the ability as well to display uh, audio levels on the viewfinder. So it really is a fully featured uh, nicely thought out viewfinder. Finally, this page here is the system settings where you can change the backlight and how bright the backlight is. In fact, this I found to be a very useful setting um, because very often you don't want the black backlight all the way up at 100%. You'll very often have it at a much lower level um, unless you're shooting outdoors on a, a very bright day. And down here you can see that we can assign different functions to the function keys so you can access your favorite settings very, very quickly. So that's the Alphatron EVF 035W viewfinder. Um, I really rate this viewfinder. It has a higher resolution screen than the Zacuto or the Cineroid and that makes a big difference when it comes to focusing. The image is much sharper, it is much clearer, it's much easier to see when you're in focus without having to resort to peaking. If you do choose to use peaking then yes that's very good as well. There is a good uh, range of diopter adjustment here. I'm getting a little myopic in my old age and I have no problems adjusting this viewfinder to suit my eyes. And of course what's the main purpose of a viewfinder? Well its main purpose is to assist you with framing and focusing and the screen in this viewfinder makes that really easy to do. Highly recommended.